Hey, I'm Alex from Airtable. I run market intelligence here. So I'm a researcher and a marketer, and I spend a lot of time talking to customers about the products that they use, what they like about them, what they don't like about them. And when you do qualitative research like that, you end up with a lot of transcripts, basically a lot of kind of free text material. Even if you ask the same questions in every interview, the most interesting stuff is usually in the tangents. And so it can be hard in qualitative research to find the structure that you need uh, in your analysis to then find the patterns, which is what you ultimately want to distill down and deliver to your stakeholders and leadership. And so when I first started to try to, to, to push myself in analysis and go beyond just the free text transcripts, I thought maybe I could use a, a spreadsheet to uh, bring a little bit of structure to my analysis and, and start to codify each of the insights that, uh, that my interviews were giving me. And so those very early spreadsheets kind of looked something like this. Okay, so I spoke with Alex, I spoke with Aaron, many interviews down the side, and then maybe I would have a summary of text of that interview, and then I might have a, uh, you know, maybe what were their comments about our product? What were their comments about our sales experience, about our marketing? And then you go, okay, well, maybe I need a little more detail than that. Maybe I should do I have comments on each area of the product, product area one, uh, you know, product area two or, or different aspects of the sales journey. And then you go, okay, well, as I, as you go, you, maybe I need to capture things like the sentiment as well. So maybe each of these was a quote. So this might be a free text quote in here from the transcript, but then I also wanted to capture like the corresponding sentiment, you know, positive or negative. And then I could maybe summarize and now and, and analyze that later. So product area one sentiment, product area two sentiment, well, I guess I'm gonna have to do that for sales and marketing as well. And then you go, okay, well, wait a second. I think maybe each of these nuggets, each of these sort of sets of information, the, the, the pairing of a quote and the sentiment and maybe other attributes of that insight should be its own row. Okay, so then it's like, we'll scratch all of that. Each row is not gonna be an interview. Each row is gonna be an insight, but then I'll have to capture which interview it's from. And now I have to, you know, right, if there's many insights, that came from Aaron's interview. Well, now I'm gonna put this same information about the interview in multiple places, and that just gets very error prone and repetitive. I wanna store the information about the interview once, but then itemize all the insights so that I could have that clearer structure about things like sentiment and other tags and attributes that I wanna put on it. So that's how I started in spreadsheets, and that's where I started to feel the strain. But then uh, learning about Airtable, back before I worked here, uh, gave me a new way to structure and analyze this data. Okay, so over in Airtable, the data structure that we can create allows us to much more easily find the patterns in the data, bring structure to that free text qualitative information, but without creating you know, manual or repetitive or redundant data entry. And so we've structured a pretty simple base here in Airtable. The, the two most important tables are the interviews table and the insights table. So each record in this interviews table first, I'll just set aside the, uh, the apps tray for now. Each record in the interviews table uh, represents one, one interview that I do as, as part of a customer research study. Um, a nice thing in Airtable is that it's so visual that in the gallery view, you can even put like the logos of the company. Um, and you can you know, sort of say who you spoke with. I often will also add a bit of a measure of kind of the quality of the interview. And Airtable has this nice, simple five-star uh, rating field type that you can use. You know, some research interviews just don't really go anywhere, or you maybe you're talking to the wrong person. So you don't want to just throw it away, but you should note that maybe it wasn't the most insightful interview. So you can do that. And then I've actually sorted by signal quality here. So if someone comes to the base and they just want to read a couple of the best interviews or, or learn about the insights from a couple of the best ones, they can start at the top. So we have a bunch of other uh, data that sits at the interview level that doesn't have to be entered anywhere else, which is awesome. So I'm gonna open up the apps panel on the side here in Airtable. And one of the apps that I use to help me sort of stay, um, uh, understand how I've structured the base and how things connect to each other is the base schema app. So at the interview level, I list out, you know, what is, uh, what, you know, who's the interview, who, who was I speaking with, their organization, then all the insights that are associated with it, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, if I'm studying 
whether a customer, what are the reasons why a customer went with one product over another, I might want to list the outcome and the winning product. I'll link over to the full call, call recording on Zoom or whatever you use. And then whatever other uh, all kind of demographic or, or um, uh, attributes of the user or the organization are relevant to your study can live here too. So their use case, uh, maybe their industry vertical, if that's what your um, if that's what's most relevant for your segmentation, that can all sit at the interview level. And then there's the insights table. So the insights consist of, I'll tab over there now, and we'll set aside the apps tray again. The insights consist of uh, several attributes that we were kind of getting at at that spreadsheet, but the structure really got strained very quickly, as you saw. So one interview, this interview with Ari, and then an interview with Ash here, as you see, will yield N insights. And we can codify those insights using a consistent structure, no matter what the insight is about. So let's look at the four insights from Ari's interview. There were three that were really important to Ari and the, and the jobs that they were trying to do and the decision that they made, whatever the context of your study is, some measure of importance. And the options here that I use are really simple. Primary factor, contributing factor, or just something that they noted that was interesting. Then we can codify a sentiment. And that sentiment is about some attribute of a product, uh, some, some way that they're getting the job done today uh, as a customer. So these products, you'll notice, this is not a select field in Airtable, it's actually a link to another table. So we have another table over here that lists out all of the products in our industry. Maybe it's us and our competitors, maybe you even include sort of offline solutions um, or legacy ways of getting the job done that you don't even really consider competitors, list them all out there. And then we can refer to the product from the insights table. This is where things start to get really interesting in our table and you can connect these different objects together. And what's powerful about keeping products on its own table is that I can now even add other attributes of these competing products on this table. So maybe I need to add a single select for um, you know, the, the type of competitor that this is or the size of competitor Whatever it is, that can all live on this table. And if I need to, I can pull it over to the insights table as well with a lookup. So finishing our uh, tour of what, what constitutes an insight from an interview, we have an insight that has an importance sentiment about a product, and then we can tag more specific attributes of the, of the product. And these tags are not specific to each product. The tags are actually their own entity, their own object. And all the products can, any of the products can have any of these attributes or tags. And so these are, you know, maybe they're features of the product, maybe they're more holistic, maybe they're specific things, um, maybe they are commercial, maybe they're product. But in this case, each of the tags is also associated with a functional area. So at the conclusion of a customer research study, I can say, hey, product team or hey, sales team, here are all the positive and negative comments about us and about our competition. And I can do that really easily because the data is structured in such a straightforward way that with something like a pivot table, and I'll open up the apps panel again to show you this, I can really quickly create this view that organizes by sentiment. So you'll notice here I use the terms positive and negative, but then also rave and rant if there's anything particularly strong or particularly emotional that a customer comes across with in the interview. And then maybe organized by importance, you could organize it by product as well, or, or of course by functional area. So that's pretty much the tour of the base. You've got your interviews table, insights, when the insights flow from the interviews, those insights can be associated with tags. Uh, you also associate those insights with particular products. And then the last thing that gets really exciting is you wanna summarize all of your insights. You don't wanna just hand off this base to someone who maybe only has five minutes to understand what you've been working on for the last couple months with this big research study. You can then start to itemize your themes and associate insights directly with those themes. And one last little spin that I'll sometimes do is maybe there were seven insights in, in support of a particular theme, of a particular kind of thesis statement of, or, or investment that you should make coming out of this research. But then maybe there were a couple that fly right in the face of that. And people said, actually, that part of the product is great or that part of the product uh, is, not, is not so great. And you can list both the insights that support a theme and the insights that counter a theme just by linking over to that insight table. So I hope that gives you a good sense of how we use Airtable to do different types of customer research uh, here at Airtable.